Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. So in today's card making video, we're gonna be using gilding flakes and we're gonna be using this gorgeous William Morris Strawberry Thief stamp set from Indigo Blue. This is a beautiful red rubber stamp. I haven't had a chance to use it yet, so today is gonna to be the first day. And because Indigo Blue already mount their stamps, they attach beautifully to a clear acrylic block or a stamping platform. I'm going to be using the Autumn Blaze um, Mega Flakes from Indigo Blue. These are no longer available, but they do have other varieties of flakes uh, that would work just as well for this. I'm going to be using the Flitter Glue from Indigo Blue, which is a tacky glue. And I'm just going to apply some to this piece of fat foam or sponge. And I'm going to make sure that I push that all in with my palette knife so that we've turned our little sponge into an ink pad. If you've not seen me use Gilding Flakes before, I have a lot of videos on my channel now using them. So hopefully that will give you lots of ideas and inspiration of ways to use your Gilding Flakes. So I'm just inking up my stamp as it were now with the tacky glue and I'm just making sure that I've got a really good coverage. It's quite a large stamp so I don't want to miss any areas. And then what we're going to do is basically kiss the cardstock. So you just want to touch it and then remove it pretty quickly. You don't want to risk tearing the card. So you can just about see the pattern there. In real life I could see that I'd got a really good stamped image. And then you want to go ahead and wash your stamp in some warm soapy water just to get that glue off before it dries. Once the tacky glue is dry, it goes clear so you know that it's ready to attach gilding flakes to. You can use um, flitter glue with glitter as well, so it's not just for gilding flakes and it also works beautifully with toner foil as well. So I'm using these flakes today and because there's a variety of different colours in the tub, I really want to make sure that I get a nice even spread of the different flakes across my panel. So you're going to have a lovely variation of coppers and golds and silvers. And then once I've got all of that down and I've covered the panel with flakes, I'm then going to go ahead and just rub them in with my uh, finger. Now I am working on a piece of scrap paper just so that I don't make a mess of my glass mat. However, because these flakes are nice and big, you don't tend to get in too much of a mess with these. So I've also got a few bits left over in another tub of gilding flakes. So I just want to use some of those up as well. Um, and that just helps fill in some of the smaller gaps. So any excess that's on your piece of paper or scrap paper, you can just pop back into the pot and you can use them again. And now I'm just using a piece of scoochy foam or abrasive foam and this just takes off the excess flakes and really helps reveal the pattern. You can use the paintbrush for this and as you'll see in a minute I do come in with a little paintbrush just to get out some of the finer details that the foam had missed. Um, but yeah, you don't need a scoochy foam, you can just use a paintbrush to remove the excess. Um, and then that will just really bring out the pattern as you can see there. I have missed a tiny bit of the stamped image in the top left. I clearly didn't get any glue there. Uh, so none of the flakes have stuck there. So um, yeah, this is where it kind of takes a little twist. I'd really want you to use a whole gilded flake panel, but I'm gonna trim it down and we're just gonna use the best bit. So I've just got my paper trimmer here and I've just trimmed off the border just so that I can see how it kind of looks. And then I'm just gonna take it down to just over three and a half inches squared. And then I decide to add a layer of metallic gold cardstock. So I had a little scrap left over, so I just trimmed off the excess. And that left a lovely thin gold border around the outside. So I'm just going to use some Cosmic Shimmer glue here. The reason I'm not using Kalal glue um, is because metallic cardstock, the surface seems to get stripped off when you use the Kalal glue. So yeah, I'm using the Cosmic Shimmer glue here. So next, I've got a piece of white cardstock and I'm just going to ink up that stamp again in the Morning Mist Versafine Claire uh, ink, which is like a very dark grey. And then once I've made sure I've got a really good impression, I'm going to use that as my background. So I'm just going to trim off the border again using my Tim Holtz trimmer. And at this stage, I thought I was going to kind of go for a layered stamp look. So I kind of thought I could use the Gilded Flakes section over the top of the grey um, stamped image and just kind of line it up where that stamp would have continued but I'm not sure about how it's looking so I go ahead and just cut a green matte layer just to see if that makes it pop a little bit more um, but I'm still not happy with it I bring out my 5x7 card blank just so that I can see it with that white border and I'm still really undecided so I then go ahead and add a gold matte layer um, but sometimes I find with my Tim Holtz trimmer if I've not made sure that I've held the plastic edge down, um, I don't get very straight lines. So I'm just neatening up the green 
panel there and then I've got my gold matte layer so I'm going to layer all those three panels up together so I'm using cloud glue here for the stamped image onto the green cardstock and then I'm going to go ahead and use the cosmic shimmer glue just to attach that down to the metallic gold cardstock and then I'm going to attach that down nice and centrally to my five by seven card blank so there's quite a lot of matte and layers here however I always really like how that looks and feels on a card I think it makes them look really professional so yeah don't shy away from using matte layers because I really do think sometimes that's all you need to just step up a card and make it look really professional and feel like a quality card and then I go ahead and think do you know what I actually think the Gilded Flakes section looks nice on an angle so I'm going to go ahead and add some frame tape all over the back of it I'm just using some craft stash frame tape uh, I've got my long bladed Tim Holtz scissors which I've really gunked up and I really need to clean them and then I thought this circular sentiment would look really nice on the card. So this is from the Catherine Pooler um, Every Occasion Sentiment Stamp Set. It was already stamped and die cut on my desk. So yeah, it was ready to go. And so once I've removed all of that backing tape from the foam tape, I can just go ahead and stick this down. And I just kind of felt like having it on a slight angle, it broke up the pattern a little bit. And I just really liked the way that it looked. So I'm going to add a little bit of hessian string behind the sentiment. So I'm just kind of tying a nice big loose base bow so nothing fancy here and then I'm just going to put that in place and use some liquid glue you could of course use a hot glue gun here or some double-sided tape if you prefer and then once the bow is in place I'm just going to make sure that the sentiment kind of looks nice over it. it's in the right location add a little bit of foam tape just to hold that in place and pop the sentiment up and then that is the finished card for today so thank you so much for joining me I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this tutorial as always all the products that I've used will be linked in the description box below along with an exclusive discount code for indigo blue if there's any products that you wish to try and um, it will give you a lovely discount off most of their products on the website i've left a few close-up photos for you now and please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and leave me a comment as well i love reading them and i look forward to seeing you in the next video take care